Hey guys, it's Coop, and it's been a week since our 2022 summit, which was my favorite event that we've ever done. We had 426 people there this time, and just the energy of being around other humans in a place like that was a game changer. It really helped a lot of people get over the bumps. And I learned a few lessons, as I always do, from being at these events that weren't necessarily the things that you learn from the speakers on stage. And I'm gonna share some of those top lessons from the 2022 summit with you right now. So first off, uh, Sarah Rob O'Hagan was our first speaker. And the thing that I learned from her, she's now the CEO of Exos, was basically like who our target market actually is and how small out of the total population that target market is. Most people out there do not want to exercise the vast majority the, of those who do, they would still prefer to take an easier method. And what this means for us is that basically we have to send out more media showing people that like fitness is attainable, that it's not always backbreaking, that even if their friends don't like it, there's probably something that they will like. And even if they've tried something in the past, there's probably another method. What that really taught me is that as coaches, we still need to level up. We need to be the meta the person who tells people exactly here is what you need to do and if they don't like that thing or if it doesn't work for them we need to be able to change what they're doing into something else i don't have a clear description of how this is going to look but if you think of yourself as the person who tells the person what to do instead of necessarily being the coach who teaches them every foundational movement that really changes your perspective on your business. So for example, if my goal is to increase the health span and lifespan of 7,000 people in Sault Ste. Marie, it doesn't mean that the only way to increase their lifespan is to do CrossFit or kettlebells or weightlifting at my gym. It could mean that they need to do yoga one day a week, spin one day a week, and powerlifting one day a week, for example. But my role is still the person who's going to tell them that. And so more and more, as more options become available, the prescriptions become more valuable. And being the person who can tell you the answer, do this, who has the connections, join Ryan at his spin class, that person becomes even more valuable than ever. And if you look at the high ticket coaching programs out there, what you'll see is that they're not spending more time with the client. What they're doing is they're adding value and charging more for it by giving the client things in between the sessions, uh, accountability, plans, food guides, recipes, all of these things add value to the client, but they don't have to be standing in front of the trainer to get them. The perspective here is what's super important. And so while I was really depending on Sarah to come in and pump us up and tell us that anything was possible, what I actually learned from her is to take a more objective approach to what we're doing, to see things from the higher level that's now available with technology and knowledge and connection, and to act on those things. So just an amazing mindset shift for I think everybody in the room. Um, from there, we split into two stages. We have a coach's side and we have an owner's side and we have two speakers going at the same time. And so a lot of people brought their coaches this year. In fact, the coaches tickets were sold out. That room was jammed. It was energetic. It was, it got warm. You know, it, it smelled like coffee. Um, it, it was awesome. And the first presenter on the coach's side this year was how to sell more and help clients by Gilbert Doherty. So, so Gilbert came in all the way from uh, United Arab Emirates to talk, and he's just such a passionate, energetic guy. But what was really important was that he taught your coaches that they're not selling used cars. What they're doing is they're actually convincing people to take the steps that they need to take to live a better life. And this mindset shift was huge. Like imagine your coach is going into this session and coming away eager to sell more personal training, right? The value of that is enormous, like tens of thousands of dollars over time. And so the, the big thing that I learned from Gilbert was energy and perspective change everything. If your coaches understand the help first mindset, if they truly can act because they believe in your program and they believe that they want to have an impact in the person's life who's sitting across from them, that is when they will sign people up, not because they know the script or whatever. That was awesome. Um, Ashley Hahn showed us kind of the, the rocky path to leadership. And the really interesting thing that I took away from her speech was that good leaders 
actually have to be forged through times of trouble. Like you, you can't uh, teach other people anything unless you've been through hardship yourself, unless you've struggled yourself. And while you can learn lessons from, from one challenge that extrapolates to other challenges, the fact that you've been through something tough gives you credibility and gives you context to help other people through it. I think that's really important because a lot of people who write leadership books even have not been through those dark nights of the soul, have not been through like a meaningful challenge where they weren't sure they were going to survive in business or even, you know, in combat. And so I think that's really important. And, and I, I loved working with Ashley. This was one of my favorite parts of the whole summit. So um, there's a big lobby and we're in this beautiful hotel and conference center and I'm walking through the lobby and there's somebody attending the conference who I don't know. OK, but she recognizes me and she's kind of smiling and like, you know, she's uh, a little bit nervous, but she's going to introduce herself. And then behind me, she sees Ashley and Ashley's coming up the hall and she looks right around me. And she goes, oh my God, it's Ashley. And, and she runs straight to Ashley. Like this is the connection that you have with your mentor, right? And that's what Two Brain is all about, is connecting you with the person who's going to get you results. We have a team of 40 mentors. They're not all like me, most aren't. And people work one-on-one -on -one with the person who will get the best results. And so this was just such a prime example of how Two Brain is not really about me anymore or it's not about my gym. It's really about the best practices and the best mentors from across the entire fitness industry. Um, and it's amazing to see that we're getting to that place. Um, also on day one, Jeff Juca was talking about hiring your dream team. Um, and he was talking about like this state of constantly be hiring and how to attract the right people. And he got really tactical, like he shared job ads and stuff like that. But this mindset of finding the right people, taking the time to find the right people, instead of just like, you know, hiring one, one person from your gym and training them up and making them do this long internship process, taking the time to hire the right people in the right way is so critically important. And just like advertising for clients, like you have to advertise for coaches so that you can pick the right people and avoid problems over time. Uh, so, so, so huge. You know, one, one thing that Jay Williams, uh, who was on the team for a few years at our inception once told me was like, sometimes we make up these policies when really we should just be changing the people. Super important. Um, on the coach's side, Oscar taught three steps to make more money with less work and, and create a greater impact. And Oscar is all about impact. I mean, uh, I can't even tell you this guy's backstory, but he's on the CrossFit seminar staff solely because he wants to teach coaches how to have a greater impact. And he's on the two brain mentoring staff because he wants to teach gym owners how to grow their gyms and impact more lives. That's all the guy cares about. And so this context was also amazing for coaches to hear. And it wasn't just like how to improve your coaching on the air squat or your triaging or whatever. It was really how to change people's lives. Such a powerful, powerful talk. Um, and then from there, we went on to Kenny Marquardt on the owner's side talking about building career coaches. And this was an interesting process. So Kenny um, started with the question, how can I help my coaches become millionaires? And he started working backward from that to determine like, what is the optimal career path? And he used some specific two brain tools in his talk, like the career roadmap. He used some other resources like the dream manager. And really he put together a very cohesive way to mentor your team to grow the pie for the business and become successful. And so I know, you know, we published guides before about like how to make $70,000 a year as a coach, but this is really, uh, how the owner can mentor their staff to get there because they won't just get there from a spreadsheet. It, giving them the instructions is not enough. You have to mentor them. When you hire staff, you become a manager and you become a mentor. And Kenny taught us exactly how to do that. It was such an amazing presentation that I actually called him a week later because I was still thinking about it and asked him to build us a course that we're going to put in our growth and tinker programs. Um, on the coach's side, Mike Watson, who is near and dear to my heart, he's a longtime friend. He's been coaching with me for 22 years. He's the general manager of Catalyst. Uh, Mike got up and talked about five tools that every career coach needs. The interesting thing about Mike is that when we went through COVID lockdowns, which lasted almost two years, 
Mike had a retention rate of over 90%, even though we shifted everybody online. And he learned from that. And now it's actually improved our retention rate at slower times of the year. And that that process has forced us to level up and think about this meta level of what is the best thing for our clients. It's brought us right back to what is our vision. It's brought us back to what is our model? How do we affect this change in town? And then from there, how do we mentor our coaches to actually deliver that change in people's lives? And so Mike is an expert at that. He works for the Refined Art of Coaching as a mentor for them. And he had a ton of wisdom to share with people in the room who are one, two, three, even 10 years in. Mike's been a coach for a long time. This is his career and he's an amazing resource for coaches who want to get there too. On the second day, uh, Per Matson from Sweden, uh, and this is the founder of Coaches Congress Sweden and upcoming Coaches Congress Berlin. Uh, he got up and talked to us about managing through change. So most gym owners who come into Two Brain, they know that they've got to change something. And soon they find out that they have to change many things. And so they start to get overwhelmed. Like this is going to be really hard. I've got to change my schedule. I might have to change my staff. My prices need to change. I need to add this thing. I need to take that thing away from people. How do I do it? And Pear is an expert at managing through change. And so his talk was basically how to set a long-term plan to improve your gym, how to prioritize what you do now, when to do the next steps, et cetera. And basically how to guide your staff. Per is so good at this that I turn to him um, when I have questions on that topic too. And not only is he great at it from his years as a high school principal and a multiple gym owner, leader of coaches Congress, employer of dozens of people, but he's also super funny. And so this presentation taught me that like you can get a point across better uh, with stickier stories and funny jokes. And um, that also translates into leadership in your box. Um, we also had Tivy Thompson step up on the owner's side and teach sell by chat. Tivy's got an amazing backstory. I won't share all of it here, but people at Comic-Con literally dress up like the character that Tiffy um, plays or the character modeled after Tiffy in a comic book. Um, so, you know, there's this character modeled after her in a comic book. People dress up like her at Comic-Con. It's bananas. Uh, but she's also had a crazy background as a journalist. She was hired as a virtual dating assistant for somebody who found a wife. And she had a ton to teach us about communicating with people through text. We tend to just like write like we talk, which is the wrong way to do it. She made it more natural to communicate professionally through text, but also to get people to come in and try an NSI. And so her talk was on sell by chat. She's an amazing expert. She's built courses for two brain. And this is one of the most effective funnels um, that we teach now. And speaking of funnels, Colin O'Reilly got up in his, you know, Irish wit and cleverness. And he taught us the four funnels. The beautiful part about this was that even though we've been teaching all of these marketing strategies, Colin brought us back to basics and said, like, there are four funnels that you need. He laid out each one in order, showed us exactly where to get the materials and the resources and the templates and the swipe files for all of them within the two brain um, like toolkit. And he gave us some tips. So a lot of us make mistakes with our marketing, like our marketing, instead of pointing to our website, points to other marketing. And so we send people around in a loop instead of down a funnel to an NSI where we can actually help them. And we often confuse giving away information with actually helping the person, which is what our real service does. And so he gave some amazing insights on each of the four funnels. He made them really simple and people had set up their marketing and streamlined it to work better just while they were sitting there with him. It was an amazing workshop. On the coach's side on day two, Jolene taught a strategy called how to gain more one-on-one -on -one clients. And what she was teaching was amazing for me to watch because I was so, so proud of her. But it also struck a chord with me because it was the way that I gained personal training clients when I was working at a studio back in 2005. And I went from having, you know, maybe half a dozen clients at the most to having a full roster of 34 clients. I literally couldn't take any more within a couple of months. Now she taught this to coaches. And the amazing thing was when we came back, we had a staff meeting at Catalyst. Mike taught the exact same thing to coaches using Jolene's playbook. 
and they all started going out and working on getting clients like it, it was so great and so transferable but the key is really that they need to work hard to establish their authority in fitness and they need to publish stuff on their own social media platforms you know when i did it there was no social media and so i had to find platforms i had to make deals with online newspapers and find places where i could post a blog and that worked really fast but now it's even faster if your coaches know how to leverage social media to get themselves clients and Jolene taught us that and then uh Jeff and Mickey Martin from Brand X got up and talked about the importance of changing the lives of youth and how to do that through fitness programs and what really struck me here is that if you do it right you can have a profound and resonating impact on somebody who would otherwise go astray in life there are a lot of people who eat processed carbs, who don't exercise simply because they don't know what to do. They don't have a framework. They're not confident in their knowledge of fitness. And so they might buy a diet book. They might try a, you know, a soup diet sometime in their life. They might do what their friend is doing. They might do 30 days of intermittent fasting, but we can set them up for long-term success with just a couple of years in our gym when they're younger. And Jeff and Mickey taught us how to do that. And that was that was amazing to me. So uh, then I got up and I talked about impact, but there were a couple of things that I learned between the sessions too, which were just so crazy important. And one of the things was interacting in an informal environment often creates the connections that give you the big outcomes later. So for example, uh, John Briggs, Vaughn Vernon, and um, Clayton Ferrer from Rig Equipment, uh, so Insight Tax, Agard, and Rig Equipment sponsored a happy hour for gym owners on the Saturday night. And I wandered by around eight o'clock, went up to the happy hour, and it was packed. There were a hundred gym owners in there. People were meeting other gym owners that they'd never met before, but they will continue those conversations and those connections forever. So even three years from now, if they need help, advice, support, if they need to hear, yeah, I've been there they can call this person and they've got that immediate connection because they met at Summit. And one of the, the greatest things for me is meeting people in person. You know, I, I spent some time with Chris Williams. Uh, he's, he's new to our Tinker program. I didn't know Chris before in person. And now I know like what a generous human this guy is and the impact that he's trying to create. And so one of the pieces of advice that I, that I gave to people during my talk was like, identify uh, if your business is a rocket, you need to identify the four people in the cockpit. And the first is the captain, that's you. The second is the navigator, and that's your, um, your mentor. The third is your first mate. Who do you depend on most of all? And the fourth is your hero. And I told them that, you know, when you have identified your hero, tell them so, because they will look for opportunities to help you. And I saw this happen over and over and over again, where people would make connections in the audience. They would see, you know, a table full of people in the tinker phase. They would introduce themselves and they would say, like, how do I get where you got? And the, the tinker would take them to lunch and say, I'll teach you everything. You know, I'll show you exactly everything. And these are the kind of connections that you want to make, like find heroes, find peers, find mentors and upgrade yourself. Um, another amazing thing that I heard was just the value of inspiration. So we're all kind of out here on these islands. None of us are franchisees, really. And uh, we feel alone, right? We don't feel like we've got this clear path to the stars. But when we had groups of tinkers, people who are at the million dollar net worth level and above, what we found was that people in the audience would look at them and say, whoa, it is possible. That person's done it. They are proof. And I can call them up and ask them. And that is really the power of connection too. I can, I mean, if you are struggling with your gym and you come to an event like this and you meet one person who is successful and you go shake their hand, that is worth the ticket price right there. And so just having that goal uh, is also crazy powerful. So I had a few people come up to me after my talk and say like, okay, my goal is to get to a hundred K uh, net owner benefit as fast as I can so that I can get into the Tinker program and ascend from there. And just that inspiration to keep them going for another 12 months was super powerful. Like people were telling me before the summit, I, I was almost ready to hang it up. Like I was exhausted, I was tired. Now I'm inspired and I'm ready to go out and fight again. And you know, that, there's no price tag that you can put on that. So um, the value of connection is, is massive. Collaboration is huge. Also um, being introduced to people who you wouldn't normally have thought 
would be a part of your life was important. I'll give you an example. So we, we had a vendor there called Merchant Advocate. And what these guys do is they're basically like a bunch of accountants and negotiators. And uh, you work with them and they call your payment processor and they negotiate a better rate. And then they keep a very small percentage of the difference. But most gyms that we tested this on were saving between three and 900 bucks a month. Like they're just getting that cash back that they were previously giving to the payment processor. And um, so when we made this connection to people, they were kind of blown away, like, whoa, this is really good. But if they, they would never have Googled like payment processor negotiator, right? Or better rates on my payment processor. So just being introduced to these people, it's really awesome to watch it because they, you see these connections being formed, like I would never have thought of that. And you know, they level up their business that way. So you are being exposed to new ideas. And there were a lot of ways, you know, we did this at Summit too with the vendors. Um, a lot of the vendors even gave clients ideas. Some of the vendors were there to have a lot of fun, Level Methods booth, they did Mario Kart racing and like scored on the levels, that was awesome. Sometimes people would just connect with one of the speakers and continue the conversation offline or ask questions. Sometimes people would meet a new person in the audience who's doing things differently than they are, or maybe they have a completely different type of gym, or maybe you know somebody in the audience has uh, a, you know, a, a boot camp and they want to become a CrossFit affiliate or vice versa. They can talk to other people who are already doing that and find the path to do it and get some tips. So connection is massive. The next thing that I learned from the summit, and this gets reinforced more every year, is like the value of taking your team there. So um, over the years, we've heard it is so valuable for me to take my coaches because it's like they're wind up toys and this really you know, gets them cranked up. So they get back to the gym and they're cranking on their own. And in most cases, like the, the coaches work pays for the cost of all the travel and the summit tickets like within the first week. Um, but the value of, of having a motivated team is priceless. Like imagine if all of your team got new batteries today and uh, instead of like, you know, doing their work and chugging along and filling in the, the class times and stuff, they were 25% happier, 25% more energetic. Like how would that reflect on your clients? How would that improve the customer experience? And that's really the value of, of taking your coaches to these things. It's not really investing in their knowledge as much as it is giving them a new set of batteries. So that, that was another big lesson that I learned. Another one was uh, kind of the reinforcement that we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. And so um, this year, I got up and I was talking about impact and I asked the question, do you know how special you are? And I reminded gym owners like what they had risked, the steps they had taken, the work they had done, and how very few people are willing to do that to change our economy and our culture and our society. And after the speech, which was about 40 minutes, there was a lineup for an hour and a half of people who just wanted to tell me that they needed to be reminded of that, that they, they needed to hear that somebody else understood what they had sacrificed to get to where they are now. And if you're watching this, I want you to know you truly are special and, and probably you're not hearing that enough that you're out there, maybe alone, um, you know, maybe frustrated, maybe angry, maybe crying in your office you know that you're in this now, there's no way out. Uh, the only way out is through. And, um, you know, we want to support you in that. But first, that the starting point is that you need to know that you're special and you're appreciated and you're making an impact in people's lives. It's, it's working. You're accomplishing your mission. So, so that, was, that was another important takeaway from Summit too. Um, another one is, Getting into an environment that is not your gym gives you this perspective that you can't get just by taking like a, a weekend off work. You know, you you gain this like this objectivity with distance, and the only way to gain it is distance. And when you fly somewhere and you're out of the gym and you're not thinking about certain clients, certain staff, certain problems, well, the landlord, you start looking at things differently and you gain perspective. You also gain insight and you gain a sense of like clearing the cobwebs. And that, that's so important at these events. 
Um, so we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. We need to gain objectivity, and that is sometimes best accomplished through distance. Another big one, and I'll end on this, is um, that a lot of us are product people, right? We, we love building the thing, and we constantly want to make the thing better, and that's all we focus on. But making the thing better is not what will grow our impact or grow our audience or increase our clients. And so I had a, a lot of talks with vendors, with attendees about what it would take to grow their business. And in many cases, the person in front of me would say something like, I'm going to build this new thing. I'm going to add this new program. I'm going to add boot camp. I've got this CrossFit gym. I'm stuck at 100 members, so I'm going to add a boot camp. Or I've got this software company. We're stuck at 100 gyms, so we're going to add a new app right? We're product people. We don't know how to grow. And so we go back to the product again, you know, or, or growth has suddenly become hard for the first time. Maybe it was easy up to hundred clients and we don't know what to do next. And so we go back to the thing that we do know, which is product. And I'm so guilty of this. Like, you know, whenever um, two brain hits a, a ceiling or a new plateau, I want to go back and rip our products apart. But the reality is our products are really good. Like we're producing millionaires from gym owners who were broke, you know, months or years before. It works. Um, what we can do is we can speed it up and we're working on that. But, um, you know, we don't need to work on the product. What we need to do is work on our impact. And that means growing our audience. And so, yes, it's hard. Absolutely. Um, however, that's where a lot of gym owners need to be focused and even even other businesses other vendors you know think about yourself like when you hit your last growth plateau twenty thousand a month or ten thousand a month or 100 clients or whatever that was did you say i just need to learn how to market or i need to retain better or i need sales training or did you say i need to add a new class to the schedule or i need to add this new service like nutrition you know most of the time the, the answer is actually growth. It's marketing, it's sales. Uh, a lot of the time it is, you know, your product isn't good and, and you're losing people faster than you're gaining them. But having this perspective is really important. And you really need an objective eye to point that out to you because we're all so enthralled with our product. It's our baby that we just wanna work on our product all day, right? Like we wanna take our baby to the park. We wanna take our baby to school. Instead, what we actually need to be doing is teaching our baby how to grow up. And um, that's really hard for a lot of creators and innovators and product centric people like me. So that was another great lesson that I took away from Summit this year. And you know, this, this is now like a, a long video, um, but if you ask any of the 420 odd people at Summit, what was the top thing that you took away? You're gonna get 420 different answers. And that is really the value is that the summit will be whatever you need it to be at the time. If it's inspiration, if it's education, if it's energy, if it's connection, if it's just being reminded of what you already know, it's worth it. And I really hope to see you there next year.